guys. Welcome back to the channel. I have a special guest today. Hello. <laughs> um, today I thought I would share a little bit of a homeschool update. Um, Brian and I were talking the other day about things that are happening in homeschool, um, decisions I'm making, progress of the kids, and I thought this would be really nice to have on camera. So I've seen others do homeschool updates, so I figured I would just do the same thing. We kind of sort of had this conversation already, <laughs> but we'll give it a try. So I guess the biggest thing that is happening in homeschool lately, um, we just started our body unit, and I talked about that a little bit the other day. Um, Brian knows because we've been, I mean, I end up planning or collecting resources for the next unit study at least like two months ahead of time. So it's about time. Then I have to go back and watch the videos just like you guys, so to figure out what's going on. <laughs> so. But the biggest thing in homeschool lately is that... Savannah reads. Yes. That's the biggest thing. Yes. So she spelled beard this morning. Beard. B-E-A-R-D. Big word, I was impressed. <laughs> and it's always so cute because I always give him like these verbal updates about what's going on in homeschool. And I told him a little while ago that she was reading. Um, but it's really nice to see like it happen throughout the day. And then it really clicks for him that like she's actually reading. Well, the difference with Savannah is that she updates me when I come home. Where Cameron and Kendall didn't do that as much. As soon as I walk in the door, She's like, look what I did today, and she goes out and gets her box, gets out all of her writing. She does it again. We have to, we, we sit down and she goes over it again. Uh, any words that she's read, she's really excited to give me a kind of update. When I get home with Cameron and Kendall, they didn't do that. I kind of just had to figure stuff out either on the videos or <laughs> just, it just what happened. Like Brian would ask them what they did in school today. They'd be like, oh, nothing. Yeah, Cameron still <laughs> says nothing. What did you learn today? Mm, nothing, nothing. And then later on, you, he says something in conversation or does something that he learned, and that's kind of how I have to figure out. But Savannah is much more proactive updating me what's going on. Yeah, and I think also with the boys, what I'm I've been I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I just it just hasn't squeezed itself in. But I wanted to start doing like a homework time with the boys so that there's a separate little bit of um, activity or things that they could complete with. Brian and then that way that'll help them kind of pull out what they've been learning and what they've been working on with him instead of just like a simple oh nothing and yeah. moving on with life so I may try to do that as well but um yes so she's reading which is really exciting she's also spelling everything mm -hmm. and it's it's just really cute to see mm -hmm. yeah, it's really cute to see oh so we're finishing up the phantom toll booth this Guys, we've been reading this for quite some time. I was going to say, we've been talking about this book for a long time. <laughs> we've been reading it for a long time, and I started to feel bad about it um, because we weren't reading it every single day. We just kind of read when it fits in. Um, so that's one reason why it's taken a little bit of time. But then also, this is a really like hefty book for their ages. It's a packed book. It has increased our vocabulary like tremendously. Um, it's a really, really, really good story about a young boy who basically has no drive and is bored with life. And he's introduced to this um, phantom toll booth. And it's so funny to see how things progress, like when you don't force it, because we are probably, we're at like chapter 15 right now. And this is the first time that Cameron asked me what phantom meant. So we actually looked it up and, you know, he got a good understanding of what Phantom is and that it's his imagination mm -hmm. that he feels like is very real. I think that's the beauty of this book. Just sitting back and seeing, like, the things that they pick up on were mm -hmm. really, really cool. So, oh my gosh, there's so much vocabulary in here. And I could see us reading this every year um, and still getting more and more out of it. So what we're doing now, since we're almost to the end, and they asked to read this, so... I but this is another example of no updates. Cameron or Kendall has never mentioned this book to me <laughs> since they've been reading it. It's but never they love on. it. They I would never it. know they're reading it. They love this book. It's a really good story. And I, I can tell that a lot of things do kind of go over their head, but at the same time, they are grabbing a hold of a lot of things that I didn't think they would. Mm -hmm. One of the main themes I think we are getting from it is that um, in the book he says, it's all in how you look at things. Yeah, so it's a running theme 
um, and we've been kind of implementing that into our everydays and so that's really nice. Um, now that we're getting towards the end, I've been trying to pull together some activities, but the one thing I wanted to do was this, the map that lays out where he went inside of the book. So they have the Sea of Knowledge, Digitopolis, um, Dictionopolis, the Valley of Sound, the Mountains of Ignorance. So I thought it would be fun to just kind of um, have them color and we could talk. I, I, I thought I could walk through the map and listen to them talk about it mm -hmm. and try to gather as much information as I can from what they understood from it. Okay. So we're probably going to do that. Then in addition to that, we just did these. I didn't, I was supposed to glue this, <laughs> so I haven't glued it yet. This is a cool activity about the um, dodecahedron. So in the book, he is a dodecahedron and he has many faces. So his head has oh, many okay. faces, so instead of just having one face that you have to smile and laugh and all that other stuff, mm -hmm. he has many faces. He has 12 different faces, like so we just did that. It is like a big emoji. <laughs> I thought this was the thing we used to do in school, the thing where Like a Rubik's Cube? No, That's a cube. the thing where it'd be like, oh. you're mad at this person, you're going to do this, no. and then you switch it, and you know, whatever. <laughs> you know that. It's no. like a big emoji. You know, so that's their dodecahedron. So we talked about, you know, how many sides it has, or your different emotions. Um, the, in the book, it's really cute because the dodecahedron. He says, "Well, if you just have one face, you must get pretty worn out mm -hmm. using that one face for all of those different emotions." Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's really cute. So we did that the other day. We're getting to the end of this book, and that's exciting. Oh. Um, I started reading The Boy in the Striped Pajamas with Cameron and Brian, he was getting like all types of jealous that I was getting that special reading time so he wanted to jump in there. First of all, I wasn't getting jealous. <laughs> I was, was just awful. trying to find ways, always trying to find ways that I can help out or incorporate myself into homeschool. So I was like, well, I can read the book to him. This is a book he's not reading, she's reading to him. So I said, well, I can do that. We saw the movie a couple years, several years ago and it was really good. And this is uh, this book is uh, if you don't know it's about this boy and his sister and their dad is an officer in the German army around the time of the Holocaust. So they move they move to a new place outside of the concentration camp and the boy's nine years old. He doesn't really understand him and his sister are trying to figure out why they moved there, what's going on, who are all those people outside living in the huts. So it's uh, I think it's giving us a way to talk to him about social issues and. Uh, things of that nature. So he does like one we were reading the other night and the boy asked his dad So who are those people outside and the, the father tells him well, don't worry about them. They're not people at all You know, they have they you have nothing Which you guys if I was reading I would have cried <laughs> <laughs> So it cried. just you know, and he's you know, and then the, uh, from those, you know, reading stuff like that and then Cameron has questions so he would explain things to him. So this is this has been good So this has been a good book the movies really good. So we're gonna watch the movie with them after we after we read it, I won't give out any spoilers, but it's a really good really good movie. And it's, it's a really it's really heavy. I, I don't know. I know it is not a, a normal pick, especially for his age. But Cameron is my compassionate child. My other children are compassionate, um, but he is the one that I can tell there's something extra to him in that area and that was why I wanted to start by uh, I thought he could handle it reading something heavy and I also picked that one because we were studying Oliver Jeffers and this is um, illustrated this particular copy is illustrated by Oliver Jeffers so I thought it would be a nice transition since we were already going through Oliver Jeffers illustrations and then also Cameron has been very very heavy into German so he has been studying German using his Duolingo and some other apps <laughs> yeah I didn't understand it either but I feel like that's another one of those areas where I just had to sit back and say you know what I just I'm trusted in the process and I'm letting I'm letting him lead me in that area so if he was interested in German I was gonna let him study German so what's really cool is that I think he feels uh, somewhat of a connection already with it because he has an understanding of the places inside the book mm -hmm. he'll just randomly say German words while mm -hmm. we're reading <laughs> which I think is really cool yeah. so um, it's nice to see them reading that together and we'll see how it goes is this overdue? Um, okay. <laughs> no, so no, no, no. Stay with they some already know. Fun. But still. They, but they already know. No, but I read. I checked that out again. Okay. I checked it out again. So but you I'll have go to be fine. Okay, I'll go check again. <laughs> I'm just saying. Whatever. Right. Okay. Boy, let's strike pajamas, y'all. 
<laughs> um, so the last thing I think I want to chat about is, and I don't really know exactly how to talk about this, but you guys know that we have been implementing the good and the beautiful into our homeschool, and we love it. But I want to talk about language arts right now and making like tough decisions. Um, so I'm not a fan of labels, so I haven't really mentioned this um, before in the past, but I guess in order for me to communicate with you what I'm experiencing, um, I guess um, my middle son, who is six, Kendall, would be considered gifted. Um, I, I, you know, I, I have trouble with that because I just believe that all children are gifted. However, um, I do recognize that, you know, he is, you know, that he is advanced in many different areas. I'm trying to get to the point here. <laughs> so, um, in the area of language arts, up until now, my six-year-old and my third grader have been on the same level. Um, and they haven't necessarily been on the same level. He's always been um, advanced in that area. However, I was comfortable leaving him on the same level as my oldest um, because this is like the foundation period in language arts. Like there's, there's nothing wrong with continuing to just drive in those spelling rules and concepts and things like that. So um, I'm just now getting to that point where I realized that I think he needs to move ahead. And I'm kind of struggling with that because I'm trying to manage um, what that will feel like and what that means for my oldest, um, seeing his brother move forward. Um, and I'm also trying to manage the guilt of feeling like I am I am holding my younger son back, if that makes any sense. Um, so I, I in no way want to hold him back and I want him to be challenged. And I'm not saying that he's not. And that's why we use a lot of the, um, I give him a lot of those electronic resources because through those he's able to move forward, you know, as far as he wants to. And I think that he's been doing an exceptional job. But as far as um, having him start to use more of the Good and the Beautiful language arts curriculum, I think that they no longer need to do them together and my younger son needs to move forward. So, um, the reason why I was drawn so much to the Good and the Beautiful, she offers you, they offer you the first five levels, um, not the first five, but grades one through five, or level one through five, they offer for free download on their website. Um, and what that did for me was like, so much because I was able to look into each one to see what type of language was used, um, you know, how was the vocabulary, that type of deal. And that was really helpful for me. And while looking through that, I was able to see, you know, really make a good decision on where I wanted them to be. Now, for my middle son, I really think that he should probably be on level four. Um, but some of the challenges with level four is, four is they have much smaller spaces to write answers in um, because they're kind of supposed <laughs> to be older. Big. And he writes big because he's, you know, six, you know. Um, so those are some challenges, but they're definitely adaptable. And it is so much more adaptable with this um, curriculum. So instead of moving him to level four, I'm just going to go ahead and move him to level three while I'm still reworking level two with my third grader. And that's just because he, you know, we move forward in some, in some areas, which he's more than capable of, my older son. Mm -hmm. But um, I rework those second, that second level with him because he needs a little more strength in that area. But for my middle son, I'm able to just move him forward. Now I anticipate, um, I anticipate that he'll probably get through this quite quickly. Um, I would say probably about six months he'll be completely through the third level, but I'm going to let him go ahead on his own and do that. And then I'm also, you guys already know that I also um, canceled the Time for Learning subscription because I was using the Good and the Beautiful and I think it's so sufficient. I, I think it's really great. However, for my middle son, 
um, he's been asking for time for learning back. Because the reality is that as homeschoolers, we get homeschool lessons done in a very short period of time. So we're kind of done with lessons if you want to put a time frame on it in maybe two hours. Mm -hmm. So what happens to the rest of that time? Um, they need stuff to do and things to be engaged in and they just can't sit and read a book all day or you know they're not playing outside all day so um, just to have more things to fill that space with I think I'm going to go ahead and sign up for time for learning again so that he can just kind of go with it and yeah, go where he Kendall's likes. a lot more prone to pick up the iPad or go on the computer and do things on, on any time the weekends in the evenings any time that he just wants something to do. So Duolingo is a big thing. Yeah. He's still doing the Duolingo. When we had time for learning, I think, what was it, Splash Man? Mm -hmm. And some, he still some, does some time those ago, things. He'll just go and you'll see, hey, what's Kendall doing? He's quiet, too quiet. Mm -hmm. And he's in the corner somewhere doing something on the iPad, one of the apps on the iPad. But what's really <clears throat> cool is that they love being together and doing things together. So one strength, um, one thing that one is doing, next thing you know, they're like, oh, well, I want to get in on that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Cameron ends Where's up spending iPad? more time yeah. on things that Kendall likes because Kendall's on them so much and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's my basically my last update. And, I, of course, it sounds much more put together here, but when I was going to Brian about it, I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, he needs some more something, and he keeps asking for time for learning, but I traded time for learning for the good and the beautiful. And yeah. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, I think what's great about these resources is that they are affordable yeah. and um, I, I wanted something that was going to fit in to how we do things and not us have to try and fit into how they do things so um, I think that the good and the beautiful is amazing for that and I think that time for learning is actually amazing for that um, there were certain things I felt like I was missing from time for learning um, that I wanted to have and I think that the good and the beautiful filled that for me and then the other way around, you know, even though they can do a lot of the good and the beautiful on their own, mm -hmm. that computer, I'm um, having fun element, you know, just fills up another part in the day that I think is really good. Yeah. Um, because that, that was how they first were introduced to Jane Goodall. Mm -hmm. And then we moved off into a, a separate, you know, study about that. Yeah. So they're introduced to so much one time for learning different concepts about writing and everything and I think that that's invaluable so um, I went to him and just asked him do you think we should get that back and he was like yeah sure I was like hey fifth year homeschool because <laughs> you know in that first year I don't know maybe it's this week but in that first year he's like what what are you doing now he's like yeah whatever you think babe. whatever Oh, yeah, so the camera cut off. <laughs> but basically, you guys get the gist. I'm going to try my best to have him make an appearance at each of these homeschool updates because this was fun. I'm a regular? You got to be a regular. I got promoted. You got, okay. well, don't, don't get comfortable because <laughs> he gets fired every day. She does fire me. <laughs> but I'm fired by a dozen times. Yeah. So anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this little homeschool update. I would love to know what's going on in your homeschool, what changes you've made, if you've been there before with any of the changes that, that you know, we've talked about. Day three, no, it's day, day four. four. Oh, day four. Day four of Vlogsgiving. Day four. In the books. In the books. And we have a giveaway coming up. Giveaway. So thanks for watching, you guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.